Welcome back for part four of the intro to HMIS data standards training. The next section will review the data elements that are required for agencies participating in HMIS to collect. These are also called universal data elements, program specific elements, and additional elements. We'll show you what elements are required for everyone, just for some project types, and for just some funding sources. So here are the data elements required for all funding sources. We've divided them into two groups based on which clients in any household need these data elements. The first column of elements are for all clients, including children, in households. The second column are elements that are only needed for heads of households and other adults in the household. Altogether, these are the elements that our Intro to HMIS Data Standards training will review. All agencies participating in HMIS, or funded by HUD, must ask clients for the appropriate data elements. This is your responsibility to collect and ask clients for their responses. On the other side of this requirement is that clients are not obligated to reply to any data element in order to receive services. It's up to us to ask, not clients. This brings us to a set of three responses commonly available for data elements. Two of these options refer to the client. Client doesn't know and client refused. These mean that the client was asked about a data element, but either didn't know or refused to answer. Data not collected should only be used in rare situations. This option should be used when a case manager or data collection staff forgot or were unable to ask about a data element and therefore does not know the answer. Here's what we'll go over for each data element. We'll define it, talk about how to collect it, who it is required for, when to collect it, and any special items to remember when collecting this data. We will also show you each element on the paper assessment for delayed data entry. The following data elements are required for all clients, even the kids. Name refers to the full legal name of the client and HMIS does not require documentation. Some funding sources may require documentation for eligibility. HMIS data standards require a full name for all clients and this should be collected for client record creation. A special reminder, there is a separate question which requires data quality status for the client's name. This allows HMIS to know if a client gives a full name or only a partial name. The data quality status must be completed according to the response to name. Many reports rely on this response. Now, street outreach projects may need to build trust over time to get the full name of the client. SO staff can use a temporary or street name and add the full name later. The location to record name and name data quality is at the top of your project start paper assessment and looks like this. Make sure that you are checking which data quality status applies. Social security number refers to the nine digit unique number issued by the Social Security Administration and is used to deduplicate client records. Again, documentation is not necessary for HMIS. Some funding sources may require documentation for eligibility. All clients need to be asked about their social security numbers, and this element is part of the HMIS profile in the record creation stage. Social security numbers also require a data quality status to know if the number is a partial. The data quality status must be completed according to the response of social security number. Missing or inaccurate socials like zeros will cause errors in reporting. And remember, not all clients will have a social. Select client doesn't know in these circumstances. Social security numbers are not required for services and clients should not be denied services for not knowing, not having, or refusing to give their numbers. The exception for this is projects with a statutory requirement in order to receive services, such as VA funded projects, or a requirement in effect before 1975. For example, in VA projects, veterans need their social security number for eligibility verification, but their household members cannot be denied services based on whether or not you've collected their social security number. 
The location to record social security number and data quality status is right below name on your paper assessment. Make sure that you are checking which data quality status applies. Veteran status refers to veterans of the U.S. Armed Forces. This includes active duty in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine Corps, and Coast Guard. If the client was in the Reserves or National Guard and called to active duty, their veteran status equals yes. HUD suggests some ways to ask this question, uh, such as, have you ever been on active duty in the military? Or, were you disabled during a period of active duty training? No documentation is necessary for HMIS. For some projects and funding sources, veteran status will need to be verified, but that takes place outside of HMIS. The response for veteran status does not determine eligibility for veterans programs. Veteran status is required for all adults. Children under 18 cannot be veterans, so their response is no. This is one of the data elements collected for record creation and only collected once. One reminder for this element is that a client's status does not depend on their discharge status or length of service. For example, a client may identify as a veteran accurately without qualifying for VA-funded projects like SSVF. Here are the possible responses on the paper assessment. In HMIS, this element is listed on the client profile, so we've reflected that here by placing veteran status on page 1 of the standard paper assessment. The date of birth is the month, day, and year the client was born. No documentation is necessary. All clients must be asked for their date of birth. This data is collected for record creation and project start assessment. Date of birth also requires a data quality status to indicate if it is complete or an estimate. This data quality section must be completed for the date of birth collected. Sometimes households grow while you're working with a client, and as a rule, new babies will have a project start date that is at least one day after the date of birth. HUD considers it very unlikely that a new child will be served by a project before being discharged from a hospital. Here is the element on the paper assessment. Date of birth has the same format as social security number for recording a data quality status. Gender refers to the gender identity of a client. HUD suggests one way to ask this is, which of these genders best describes how you identify? This element should be strictly self-reported by the client, and staff observations are not appropriate. Documentation is also not necessary. All clients should be asked about gender identity, and this data is collected for record creation and project start assessment. Here's gender on the paper assessment. Race refers to one or more racial categories of the client, and this is up to five. This element should be strictly self-reported by the client, and staff observations are not appropriate. Racial identity has a significance and power that can make this question feel awkward. We suggest letting the client know that staff cannot assume their race to be consistent and respectful to all clients. HUD suggests that staff may help a client answer with something like, do you know if your ancestors were originally from a country like Spain, somewhere in Africa, or are you a part of an indigenous group? Or simply ask, which of these categories do you identify with? And list the available categories. Race may need to be considered together with ethnicity for a full picture of the client's identity. All clients should be asked how they identify race. This data is collected for record creation and project start assessment. A special reminder for this element, race is distinct from ethnicity and both are required. While clients can select up to five categories, one must be selected as primary. Also, do not use a default response for family members. Here is race on the paper assessment. If more than one option is identified, mark or number the responses in the space to the right of each selection. This way, we'll be able to differentiate the second or third identification from the primary selection. Ethnicity asks a client for another ancestral or cultural identity, either Hispanic slash Latino or not. 
HUD defines the yes response as a person of Cuban, Mexican, Puerto Rican, South or Central American, or other Spanish culture of origin, regardless of race. The client must be the one to identify their ethnicity. Staff observations are not appropriate. This data element is required for all clients and is collected for record creation and the project start assessment. A special reminder is that Hispanic refers to the roots of language, specifically Spanish, while Latinx, Latino, or Latina refers to Latin America geographically. Here is ethnicity on the paper assessment. We want to know who the client is to the head of household. To respond, we need to know who the head of household is. The head of household is the primary client for project's services. If an opportunity or question came up, who would you contact in the household? Who do you meet with most often? For specialized projects, who is the eligible client? This role is not defined by any income, maximum age, or gender. If there are adults and children under 18 in a household, HUD expects that the head of household will be one of the clients over 18. All clients must have a response for this element. If you are serving a single adult, they must be identified as the head of household. This response is required on the project start assessment. There can only be one head of household for each group of clients presenting for services together. Here is the relationship to head of household on the paper assessment. This concludes part four of the intro to HMIS data standards training.